Hi everyone, we're, we're going to do a comic book named the, uh, um, the name is the Digestive System, and his name is not, uh, you guys will see it, and it is a comic book. His name is Max Axelman. Okay, let's read it. Journey through the digestive system with Max Axia, Super Scientist, by Emily Song, illustrated by Cynthia Martin and Barbara Schultz. Section 1 Getting Hungry. Approaching his favorite local diner, super scientist Max Axiom has no idea where the next meal will take him. Boy, I'm hungry. All I can think about is food. You know, everyone needs to eat. Like gasoline in a car, food is fuel. Without it, our bodies would sputter to a stop. Just seeing people eat makes my mouth water and my stomach grumble. These reactions mean my body is revving up for digestion. Digestion is the body's process of breaking down food for use as energy. Now that I think about it, Food can't have power over us. Come on, let's find out why we crave food and how our bodies use it. See, I told you how, like, like sound effects and it's so cool. So let's go on with the book. Life would be much easier if I didn't have to eat all the time. Ever wonder why we get hungry in the first place? Like this high-tech monitor, hunger signals your body when it's low on fuel. When your blood energy is low, the brain doesn't function properly, so it signals your body to eat. The nutrients and vitamins in food give us energy and keep our organs working well. Very interesting, Max. Now, what can I get for you today? I'm having trouble deciding between the chili cheese fries or the grilled chicken sandwich. Well, like you said, what will keep your tank filled the longest? Right. I'll go with the grilled chicken sandwich. And a tall milk, please. The average person eats about 30 tons or 27 metric tons of food in his or her life. That's a lot of choices. But understanding your body's digestive system can help you decide what and when to eat. Section two, taking the plunge. Digestion begins with ingestion. Although ingestion sounds complicated, it's just a scientific word for eating. Hey, there's my friend Daisy and her daughter Lily. Looks like they are about to ingest some lunch. Their food looks so good. I have an idea. Daisy's a nutritionist. She teaches people about the best foods for their bodies. By shrinking and following her meal, we'll get a look at the digestive system in action. Besides, I have some time to kill until my food comes. Whoa! Hopefully I won't get killed in the meantime. Phew! Now, 
I'll just hop onto Daisy's sandwich. Uh-oh. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. We're inside Daisy's mouth. This area is also known as the oral cavity. It could be called the demolition zone. In here, the tongue pushes and pulls food from side to side. The teeth crush and mash large chunks into smaller bits. At the same time, saliva gushes out of the salivary glands. Also known as spit, saliva makes food wet, but it's more than just water. Saliva contains enzymes that break down food. Once the food is soft and mushy, it's ready to be swallowed. The blob of food that gets swallowed is called a bolus. And I'm about to follow the bolus to his next stop. Food continues down the throat also known as the pharynx. Both air and food pass through this tube. A tiny trap door stops food from entering the lungs. Instead, food heads to a passageway called the esophagus. Muscles push the food down into the digestive tract. The digestive tract includes all of the organs involved in digestion. Mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, large intestine, small intestine, rectum. We are now in the stomach. The stomach is where the body begins digesting proteins, like the chicken in Daisy's sandwich. The stomach releases acids and gastric juices, which continue breaking down food into smaller molecules. The body will be able to absorb some of these molecules as nutrients. Food continues down the throat, also known as a pharynx. Okay. What are you guys are learning about now? What are you thinking about? So, let's see what's going on. Section 3. Soak it in and let it out. Food sloshes around the stomach for about four hours. But I'd rather not become a victim of digestive juices. I'm headed for the exit. Are you okay, Mom? You look a little queasy. I'm fine, dear. My stomach just feels like something is swimming around in there. At the end of the stomach is a valve known as the pyloric sphincter. The valve opens and closes, allowing just the right amount of food to escape into the small intestine. <clears throat> the small intestine is a twisting and turning tube. It stretches more than 20 feet or six meters. Small intestine. Food stays in here for up to three hours, turning into a watery mixture. During this time, tiny blood vessels absorb nutrients through the walls of the small intestine. Fact. B. 
The area that absorbs nutrients in the small intestine is huge. If you opened it and laid it flat, it would cover approximately the surface area of a tennis court. This nutrient-rich blood travels to the liver. The liver separates the nutrients in your food from the waste. It determines which nutrients will go to the body immediately and which ones will stay in storage. Liver. The vitamins and minerals that it sucks in circulate through the blood and help all the organs do their jobs. The liver also makes a fluid called bile. Bile flows into the small intestine during digestion. Uh-oh. Yuck. Bile looks gross, but it helps the body absorb fat. The gallbladder stores excess bile from the liver that can later aid in digestion. The pancreas helps by spitting out juices that break up fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. After it leaves the small intestine, food slides into the large intestine. The large intestine, or colon, is where leftovers go. See that dead end over there? That's the appendix. Large intestine. Small intestine. Appendix. It doesn't have a job, but it can cause problems if it gets infected. Let's stay out of there, or we could send Daisy to the hospital. Waste that moves into the colon is a mixture of liquids and solids. Once it gets there, water drains out and the waste becomes more solid. Fat. An adult's large intestine is about three inches, 7.6 centimeters wide, and about five feet, 1.5 meters long. Millions of tiny bacteria live in both intestines. They help us with the digestive process. Bacteria. The bacteria in the colon release gases as they break down food. Certain foods are more likely to cause gas. These items tend to be hard for our bodies to digest. More of the molecules in these foods make their way to the large intestine where gas-producing bacteria wait. Some foods, like these, contain a chemical called sulfur. Sulfur produces an especially stinky type of gas when broken down. Fact. When bacteria digest beans, they release a lot of gas, but it's sulfur-free and not usually smelly. Swallowed air is another cause of non-stinky gas. It contains mostly smell-free nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Eventually, gas works its way out of your body. Gas isn't the only thing that needs to exit the system. Now we're in the rectum. Waste material called feces gets stored in the rectum until you are ready to go to the bathroom. Large intestine. Rectum. The rectum is a great exit for feces. But I'll use my teleporter to make a clean getaway. <laughs> Section 4. Why we eat. <laughs> Lily, make sure to finish your salad. Mom, why do you always tell me to eat so many vegetables? 
Vegetables supply your body with nutrients, and eating well is a big part of living a long, healthy life. Then what about chicken, Mom? Chicken has lots of protein. Your body breaks down and uses protein to build strong muscles. You guys are talking about one of my favorite subjects. Max! I can't see protein in my chicken, Max. What else is in my food that I can't see? The three main types of food are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Muscle building proteins include meat, milk, and eggs. Carbohydrates include bread, pasta, vegetables, and fruit. Butter is a type of fat. Fat takes the longest amount of time to digest. Fat protects your organs, keeps you warm, and stores energy. Eating a healthy amount of fat is an important part of nutrition. The Pyramid Plan. The My Pyramid Food Guide uses colored bars to promote a healthy diet of the major food groups. Orange equals grains. Green equals vegetables. Red equals fruits. Yellow equals oils. Blue equals dairy products. Purple equals meats, beans, and nuts. The person running up the stairs represents the importance of exercise. But how does my body get the nutrients out of the food I eat? Proteins, also called enzymes, do the job. These helper molecules inside your body turn food into energy. Mom, can we get dessert? Can we? Uh, Lily, I think you should calm down a little bit first. She always gets so hyper and full of energy after she eats. Calories do that to most of us. What's a calorie? Your body has to break down food into a form that it can use as fuel. The amount of energy in the food you eat is measured in calories. I learned about them at school. People burn calories while exercising. That's right. The body uses bits of energy to run, think, and breathe. To maintain a healthy weight, the body needs to burn the same amount of calories as it takes in. Max, your order is ready. Oh, I almost forgot how hungry I was. I'll see you two around. Bye, Bye Max. Max. Mmm, finally my mouth is watering for a reason. I can almost feel the enzymes in my saliva breaking down the lettuce. And now my esophagus is going to work, delivering the food to my stomach and intestines. Oh, and I bet my liver is excited as well. I'm feeling more energized already. I think I'll take a nice long walk. And thanks to Daisy, I'll never think about food the same way again. I said thanks thanks so much for watching everyone thank you so much for watching everyone please like and subscribe this video we love you all
Have a great day. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Good night.